In this section, 9.1, we'll discuss acceleration, where we have two frames. One of the frames will be inertial, the other frame will be accelerated, but it'll be accelerated using a linear acceleration, not necessarily a constant acceleration, but we're not going to consider rotation. So let's look how that plays out. Let's consider two coordinate systems, S0 and S. <clears throat> S0 is going to be an inertial coordinate system, so we're going to imagine that it's fixed with respect to the surface of the Earth. And S0, S, the uh, coordinate system, this is going to be a non-inertial coordinate system. So what's important here is that S uh, is being accelerated relative to S0. Uh, we can locate the origin of coordinate system S with respect to S0 using a position vector. We'll call this position vector capital uh, R0. So that's the position of the origin of coordinate system S as measured with respect to S0. And let's imagine that there's a point suspended in space somewhere. We'd like to locate that point uh, with respect to our non-inertial frame. So we're going to uh, make a, a position vector, which points at that point. From the origin of our non-inertial frame, we're going to call that position vector R. And then we'd like to locate that point with respect to our inertial frame. And we'll call that position vector uh, little r naught. And so uh, by the property of vector addition, uh, r naught vector, that's going to be equal to the position of the s-coordinate system, its origin, plus the position of that point as measured with respect to the s-coordinate system. Now this equation represents the way in which we basically solve these problems and how we convert from an inertial coordinate system to a non-inertial coordinate system. Let's take two time derivatives of both sides of this equation and what we'll get is that r not double dot is equal to R, big R not double dot plus uh, little r double dot. What's happening here is that this is the acceleration as seen in the inertial frame. And it's related to the acceleration of the non-inertial frame. That's the acceleration of the frame S as measured with respect to S naught plus the acceleration as seen in the non-inertial frame. So let's rewrite these equations uh, and try to seek a little more clarity. Okay, so here I've rewritten that uh, previous equation. The acceleration as seen in the non-inertial frame is equal to the acceleration as seen in the inertial frame. So I've switched these two terms on the right-hand side. This is the acceleration that's seen in the non-inertial frame plus the acceleration of the non-inertial frame. And that's key. This actually represents the fictitious or uh, in other accelerations that basically pop up in the non-inertial frame that do not correspond to any specific applied force. Now remember that in an inertial frame Newton's law uh, is F equals M R double dot. And this is only true in an inertial frame. And so what that means is that we can use this equation up here, multiply through by m, and we get this equation. And I'll stop using all these different colors. So, so here are the forces uh, as seen in the inertial frame. And this is equal to the apparent forces as seen in the non-inertial frame plus the mass times the acceleration of the inertial frame. Now we can imagine a case in which there are no 
applied forces as seen in the inertial frame, meaning there's no forces acting on our particle. But we can see that according to this equation, someone riding along in the non-inertial frame is still going to see apparent accelerations. So what that means is the uh, objects in, as seen in the non-inertial frame will appear to accelerate even when there's no force acting upon them. And so these are often called fictitious forces. They basically arise from our choice of coordinate system. Let's look at a specific example discussed in the book. Imagine a train car sitting at rest with respect to the surface of the Earth. And inside the train car, there's a coating of ice on the ground. And on that ice is a hockey puck resting. Now at some instant in time, the train car begins to accelerate in the forward direction with an acceleration vector A. As far as the person uh, sitting outside the train car is concerned, that puck is not subject to any forces, any net forces. And so uh, the, the net acceleration observed by the person outside the train car, maybe looking in through the window, is zero. The, the puck basically remains at rest. However, for a person inside the train car, what's going to happen? Well, the puck is suddenly going to appear to accelerate backwards in the opposite direction uh, as the train car is accelerating as measured with respect to the surface of the Earth. In other words, the acceleration of the puck is going to be in the opposite direction to the acceleration of the train car as seen from the person sitting on the surface of the Earth. As far as the person uh, on the train car is concerned, the puck accelerated backwards completely uh, uh, unaffected by any outside force. But of course we know what's really happened is that the frame itself has begun accelerating and therefore the puck will slide to the back of the train car uh, with an acceleration negative A, whatever the acceleration of the train car is. So this is an example of how you can get these sort of fictitious forces. They only arise because you're in a non-inertial frame. There's no forces acting on the puck to make it do this. It's just in an, a non-inertial frame.